How easy is a nation to run, really? Especially in Minecraft. What issues would you encounter? What controversies will unfold? Today, I'll be telling you all about the story of how I accidentally ran Minecraft's most crazy, controversial, and hectic nation for 173 days. It all started one February day on the Stoneworks Minecraft server. My home nation of Hewitka was starting to change. I was pushed out of the inner circle of the nation's highest advisors, and democracy was taking a backseat as the nation was becoming controlled by a league of oligarchs. Seeing the collapse of the neighboring empire of Bardonia, I decided to sail over and snatch up some land to create a nation of my own, which aimed to return to the values of what Hewitka once stood for. I gathered a small handful of settlers, primarily from my town of Farafin, who were sympathetic to my cause, and we began to sail aimlessly north until we reached a small island, which we believed was uninhabited, to start a new civilization. Unfortunately, the island had a small native population, known as the Pazists, led by the former Bardonian military leader, Hauser. Luckily, him and his people were not too keen on being under the rule of the nation of Ryzen, who had inherited the island following Bardonia's collapse. And so, the two of us sat down and we decided to strike a deal. Hauser and I opted to rule the island as joint monarchs and to secede from the nation of Ryzen. On February 8th, the Kingdom of Pazferin, meaning the island of peaceful tides in the Paz's tongue, declared its independence to the dismay of the nation of Ryzen. And also, here on out, we're gonna have a little diplomatic incident counter at the top corner because it just gets so much worse from here. Bruh. The provisional government government of Ryzen and Tossigrad immediately sent diplomats over to the new capital of Kishni, where they decreed our secession as illegal. However, Hauser and I offered to purchase the island for the price of $30,000, to which Ryzen luckily accepted, which means that Paz was now free and independent on the eyes of the world. Hauser and I immediately got to work constructing a proper capital building, but that was quickly grinded to a halt as we realized we may not get along as well as we first thought. Hauser and I got to talking about our past. I mentioned in passing that the peninsula just 100 blocks west from our island, known as Snedia, used to be owned by me and my family back in the day. Well, why don't you own it now? What? Well, why don't you own it now? I, I don't know, man. Pieces of land just change hands. It just was given to somebody else. Let's invade it then. No, the island is the personal possession of invade. one of the most powerful players invade. on the server. Invade. Long live La Paz. He started convincing me that I was the rightful ruler of Sneedy and urged me to use Pazferin as a launching pad for a full-scale invasion of the peninsula. No matter how many times I told him that this was an awful idea, Hauser began mobilizing an army and viciously messaging the government of Sneedy, demanding for them to join us, despite the fact that Sneedy had some very powerful allies. By the time I realized what was going on, we were quite literally on the brink of war with almost a dozen nations. So I guess that's like three to the counter. Them. I jumped into the discussions and luckily I was able to talk down the situation. They called off the invasion, but as a compensation for the hassle, Zalorn demanded that Hauser take a step back as co-leader of the nation and allow me to rule Paz independently, as he obviously isn't, and I quote, fit to do so. I swiftly agreed, but Hauser was not happy about this at all, despite me telling him that this was quite literally the consequences of his own actions. Over the following weeks, we began to disagree more and more on a variety of issues, until eventually he had had enough. In an event now known as the Spice Revolt, he and a small group of soldiers began to march towards the royal palace. But luckily, the royal guards and the majority of the citizens of the island sided with me. After a short skirmish, we were finally able to exile him from La Paz. Just before departing, Hauser looked me right in the eye and declared that he would be back one day to claim what was rightfully his. And he was right. A few weeks later, when La Paz was preoccupied with another diplomatic incident with Ryzan, Hauser returned, but this time he had foreign support. He arrived in the island with several dozen troops from the nations of Vera Block and Alamade once again overthrow my government. For the second time, he and a group of soldiers began to march towards my royal palace, thus kickstarting the Paz for in civil war and the Battle of Kaishul. This time, however, Hauser was successful. Myself and my new advisor, Duskik, were forced back to the fringes of Kishni, only holding on to a small house in the southwestern edge around the nation's nether portal. Just when I thought that all hope was lost, it seemed like the Hewitka army literally descended from the heavens to help me. We won the battle of the nether gateway, and together the combined forces of Hewitka and Pazis were able to force Hauser's troops back to the foot of La Paz. It looked as if neither was going to advance from here, and on the 27th, a ceasefire was declared. It was decided that the island was going to be partitioned down the middle, with a lengthy border wall defining the two sides. The once great nation of Pazfrin was now disunited and reorganized into two entities. The People's Democratic Republic of Pazfrin in the north, led by Hauser as a constituent kingdom of the Empire of Verablock, and the High Kingdom of Pazfrin in the south, led by Duskik, myself, and my in-game son Enoch. Hello! Quiet son! Sorry, he really wanted a cameo. Anyway, South Pazferin existed as a nation closely tied to the Hewitka Federation. But after weeks of conflict, South Pazferin's army, alongside allies in Hewitka, finally caught the Veroblockian troops off guard and stormed past the border wall, invading North Kishnir and retaking the island in its entirety on April 11th. Hauser and his supporters surrender and then flee to what remained of Bardonia. The island was then reunited, and the United Kingdom of Pazferania 
was declared, with a different name to commemorate a new era in the nation's history. Following the island's reunification, myself and my government immediately sought to rid the world of Hauser and his supporters for good. Thus, seeing a political crisis unfold in the nation of Alamein, Hasferinia used this as an opportunity to invade and to enact revenge. While this campaign didn't go exactly as planned, which means we totally lost, we did get some pretty cool relics, and it did show that our small island nation was not to be messed with, with the likes of foreign powers. Until... In early June, members from across the petty kingdoms that had formed out of Bardonia's collapse came together in a council in New Durastarok. They opted to reform their empire and to bring it back to its former glory. And of course, one of the people in this council was Hauser. Upon hearing this, I knew I was going to be their next target. But at least Tuitka was still around, right? Like, they'll protect me, they'll keep me safe, they've- No. At the end of that exact exact same month, the Hewitka Federation breathed its last breath. The oligarchs had revolted against the emperor and had plunged the empire into a perpetual state of civil war, culminating in the nation being divided amongst itself. I left Duskic in charge of the nation briefly while I tried to consolidate power in the former empire to return my family, which was descended from the founding dynasty of Hewitka, to the throne. <laughs> Myself and what remained of Hewitka's democracy began to head back to La Paz. But of course, I came to learn that in the two days that I was away, Hauser had attempted yet another invasion. For the third time, he and a group of mercenaries invaded and began to march towards my royal palace. But luckily, he managed to once again make them retreat back to Bardonia. I figured that was it. But little did I know that the worst was yet to come. On the 17th of July, two groups of illegal settlers began to appear on the southwestern Molosus Islands. Duskik and I, thinking we could integrate them as we had did with other in the past sailed over and tried to negotiate. Both groups stated that they had the support of the newly reformed Bardonian government. And if this claim was true, it would surely mean the downfall of our nation. I let Dusk continue negotiations while I set off for the Bardonian capital of New Durastorok to see what was up. When I arrived, I was met with an unfortunately familiar face at the negotiating table. Hauser. 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 That meant that the claims were true. Bardonian officials continued to pressure me into joining them or fall to the might of the Bardonian army. I did my best to negotiate, but it was no use. But luckily, at the same time, Duskik reached an agreement with the gods of the server who removed the claims due to them breaking some arbitrary server rule. I breathed a massive sigh of relief. We politely told the Bardonian diplomats to leave us alone as we won our case with admin protection on our side. But as expected, they did not see too kindly to that. Bruh. Whoops. Looking back, I totally should have seen that this would have happened. <laughs> that was such a bad idea. In a panic state, I quickly rushed back to the negotiating table, with the admins being called in as mediators. Dusk and I referred to the admins' previous decision regarding the Bardonian squatters, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, they went back on their decision and opted to support Bardonia's claim that we had instead backed out of the deal. In the midst of the discussion, Ryzen and Bardonia forced my hand. They, led by Hauser, mobilized their forces for the fourth and final time and marched towards the royal palace. He pointed a sword at me and forced me to abdicate my throne. Paz Ferenia and thus the successor state to the Huitka Federation had fallen to the enemy. Three days later, on July 31st, the nation is reformed into the province of Pazdonia, a client state of the Bardonian Empire. Unknowing of what to do or where to go, myself and my supporters fled west to Snedia, and then on that very peninsula which Hauser tried so hard to get, I easily declared my independence as the newly created Federation of Hedadia. Well, Pazferenia, Pazferen, whatever you want to call it, was horrible, riddled with issues, and only lasted 173 days. Hedadia, the successor state to both Huitka and La Paz, still remains strong to this very day. Is this an advertisement to join my Stoneworks Nation? Yes, it is. Join it out here. Bruh.